let's talk about super voting shares. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want to talk to you about super voting shares. And the reason I'm bringing this up is if you follow the news, Adam Newman is the CEO and founder or, uh, or was the CEO of WeWork, which is a co-working space. They're the largest one across the globe right now. They've been a darling of uh, Wall Street, a darling of the startup scene for a long time. And Adam Newman is out as CEO and he's been replaced. Now, here's the kicker. He might be out as CEO, but he's still in as the non-executive chairman of the board. And here's the best part, at least for Adam, he still retains control of the company. Now, I want to walk you through briefly, if you don't understand how this works with the board and voting shares and all these different things, and then we're going to talk about super voting shares. So when you have a startup that's funded by investors, you're going to be asked to form a board of directors, just like a board exists for any publicly traded company. And that board is often going to be made up of representatives of the companies that have invested in your startup, probably the founder or founders, founders, and uh, maybe even some advisors that have been with you along the way. And typically, those folks each have some vote because they own equity in the company. And so when you issue shares of a company, you have preferred shares and you have common shares. Preferred shares often get paid a dividend. Common shares are the most common and those come with voting rights. Well, all of the investors uh, in WeWork had some voting rights and they uh, voted to or basically forced Adam Newman to step down but he still gets to stay as the chairman of the board, so the top position on the board, and he still has control over his own company. Well, it may not make sense to you how that's possible when a CEO is forced out, even though he stays as chairman, how does he still have control over the day in and day out operations of the business? Well, Adam actually has what are called super voting shares, and so he has still retained control over the company. And the way super voting shares work, or the easiest way to think about them, is they are still common shares, but they have, you have more votes per share. So I'm going to do a quick example and see if I can pull this off in my head. There's three of us on the board of directors for this company. I'm the founder and I have two investors. Uh, we each own equal amount of shares in the company. Let's say that there were 30,000 shares and we issued 10,000 to each of those three people. But I have what's called super voting shares, and that's written in my agreement. That's also between myself and the company. Well, if each of the three of us have 10,000 shares, but my shares carry a super voting power, then they often come with more votes per share than the other investors. So they might all have, each investor would have 10,000, and let's say my super voting clause says that each of my shares come with five votes per share. So in that instance, the equity is still the same. Everybody still owns one third of the company, but from a vote and control perspective, because it's really the board that controls a company like that and the voting rights that come with those board seats, because I have five votes per share, I now have 50 thousand votes. I still own the same amount of shares as the other investors, but I have 50,000 votes. When well, I think about that math, when it comes to a decision that has to be voted on, those two investors don't stand a chance against me because together they have 10,000 a piece, 10,000 shares a piece, so 20,000 total. And if each one is a common share, they get one vote per share. So 10,000 votes per each of them, combined, they're only going to have 20,000 votes. And I have 10,000 shares that have super, super voting rights at five per share. I now have 50,000 votes. Together now, even though there's 30,000 shares of equity, there is 70,000 votes that come with those. And 50 is way more than half of that. And so I still control the company. I still control what happens. And no matter what those two investors want, I can pretty much control what happens 
along the way. So that's what's going on with WeWork. That's why Adam Newman is able to stick around as non-executive chairman, why he still has control over his business. There's a big debate out in the startup community about whether super voting rights are fair. As a founder, you might think that they're really fair because you want to retain control over your business. As an investor, you're probably going to believe that they aren't fair, or at least at that magnitude of the example I used, five per vote or per share. So there's a huge debate out there. Um, generally, super voting rights are used later in the evolution of a business as it's getting closer to an IPO because it has less impact along the way. There's more diversification of shares. People are more diluted. And so they don't carry quite as much power as in this case, Adam Newman has with WeWork. So interesting things happening out there. Uh, I wanted to share this because it's a topic I've really never talked about. And this was the perfect example to do it. If it's something you're thinking about doing, just understand that if you want to implement that kind of terms with your investors, you very well could drive some of them away and ask yourself, is it worth pushing them away to, to retain that control when they may be the only opportunity you have in front of you and in the future to get funding for your startup? I hope that helps. Take care. We'll see you later.